theory, you don't have any difficulties writing about women. I have never found any difficulty in writing about women. In fact, what's difficult is writing about men because they're, you know, they're really alien beings. And, those <laughs> men are really really, and I have, I always usually, I usually make my husband read them and I say, does he sound like a guy? Does, my girl, does he sound like a guy? Read it, tell me. And uh, I don't know whether his advice is really worth anything because I, but, I mean, it is, but it, 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 we, it seems to me that we should default to writing about women. And so it should be easy to write about people like yourself. The, the reason why the default is uh, in, in fiction is the white male is because for a very, very long period of time, all books were written by white men, except for you know Emily Dickinson off of the, in Amherst and that kind of a thing. Too. Mostly, the vast majority of them were written by guys. And so that's how it comes to the default. In fact, you could argue that the default romance writer is a female. When men want to write category romance, they have to use pseudonyms, female pseudonyms. But I think that there's a difference between what we're writing and how it's being read. Yeah. Um, I, I will go ahead and write about a librarian who finds out that she's a witch. Mm -hmm. um, and to some extent, she stands in for every 25-year-old young person, young woman, who is trying to figure out who she's going to be when she grows up and what she wants to do professionally and personally with friendships and with romance and with magic. And, and I can write all of that and fold in personal experiences from when I was a 25-year-old librarian witch and best <laughs> friend experiences. Um, but the moment the book is published and put out there in public, it's going to be read as chiclet. That's, it, it's going to be categorized, it's going to be set aside, and the critical eye is going to be the one that Jerry was describing as one that defaults to straight white male. Uh, and so my challenge as an author is to create that librarian witch character and to give her enough attributes that she is a recognizable individual, and she's no longer every woman who is um, confronting the straight white male mean or median or mode or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> uh, but instead, she has the individual characteristics and individualized responses, and that becomes a challenge in creating the character. I want to add a question. On even though this one you guys to think about. But as you write female characters, you are a woman. You have a woman's people. How do you differentiate between your different characters and try and make them unique, which I know is problematic for some authors, such as my, my big example is Robert Jordan, who every woman is good-looking, <laughs> dangerous, and angry, and that seems to be the extent of their abilities. But that ties right into what I was about to say, so it's a really... I have three female characters in three different series, and I was just thinking as we were talking about it, that I'm sure all of them get different complaints. One of them, the Miranda in the Prosper books is, is, is she's a 500-year-old virgin who's a uh, sacred handmaid of the unicorn, so she's kind of cold and distant. And I was just thinking about a, a reader who had complained that she giggled at the end. And my first reaction was to think of all the really impressive things she does and why is the giggle bothering her. And this is my second reaction was, what's wrong with giggling? I mean, what, why is it we can't be both strong and giggle? I mean, it just doesn't seem quite right. But when I look at her compared to my other characters, each of them have, uh, very easily I could see someone complaining that one of them was too egalitarian, too modern, and that the other one is too old-fashioned, too feminine. And yet they're all very, you know, active, able people who are really having a big effect on the world around them. And, and I think that what we do when we're differentiating them is we pick different qualities. Really what makes a character three-dimensional usually is that they have goals that are in conflict. They have, they have things they're trying to do that are not, that it's, they can't do them both at the same time easily. And by just picking a different qualities, different goals, different, uh, these goals can be emotional qualities that can be actual goals, like I want to go to China. Uh, but by picking different ones, you get a different flavor. You get, you get somebody who's 
you know, spirited quality is working against their shyness produces a very different character than someone whose drive for revenge is fighting against their general outgoing cheerfulness. I mean, just, just that alone, you can tell those would be very different characters. The devil's in the details. <laughs> Um, I think that you know we all, uh, all of us have created multiple female characters, but we've all also created multiple male characters, and um, I think we've all created multiple supernatural, not actually real, existent characters. Animals. Uh, animal. um, and it, it, you know, that's all part of what we do is we're defining those creations, is figuring out if this person is a stage manager and this person is an actress, they're going to be looking at the production very, very differently. So what images are they going to use? What metaphors will they use? And they may both be 25-year-old women, but they're going to have a completely different perspective.